Hey guys, another day working on the Montero. Today we're going to be putting in the radiator and the core support, hopefully. Um, I just picked up a radiator about an hour ago. It's a 99 F-body Camaro radiator with the two fans on it. I got this pretty cheap. Um, it has the trans cooler lines uh, that go on the side here. I thought those trans cooler lines would be the same size, same thread and stuff as the 4L60 E1, but it wasn't. So, I mean, that's an easy fix. I'll just chop it and uh, put a new fitting on it. Pretty simple. So, what we need to do here is chop, chop this right here and kind of follow it up. Uh, there's going to be probably like a six inch um, radiator hose here. So yeah, we're going to chop that side, chop that side, and it should should sit right here in between the frame rails. This is about 28 inches long, and we have about 31 inches in between these supports here, and it sh should fit pretty nice. Got it all trimmed out, both sides, just a little bit of clearance here. Uh, I'll tidy it up later. Just a little bit of clearance everywhere, basically. Um, the thing is, is that these fans are pretty wide, and it's like six inches um, from the start of this. So I think what I'm going to do is space out the motors, the fans themselves, in. Because they still they have like an inch, over an inch to go down in there. So I'm going to see if I can space them out with some longer screws and uh, spacers. And then that should uh, be plenty. This is pretty close to the hood. I think if I angle... If I angle the radiator, it will fit perfect in there. This is how I'm going to get the fan motor to sit uh, more flush with the shroud. If you can see that, I'm not sure. But this is how I'm going to do it. I got some fuel line, and then I'm just going to use that as a spacer. And I got some longer screws. The stock, the stock screws are about that big. And the ones I just got are about, I don't know, half inch longer than it. So it should work. It doesn't need to be spaced out too much. Look at bug on me. So, yep, I'll just cut this fuel line up and make spacers, and I'll probably do it for the other side as well. I'm actually very happy with how that turned out. So you see that sticks out, I mean, maybe three quarters of an inch, whereas this sticks out over an inch. Um, it's solid in there. It's really nice, actually. I'm really happy how that turned out, and I think that will give me enough room. Well, it is a super tight fit. Got the radiator in there mocked up with all the body panels. What I'm gonna do now is trim off these pieces of the frame rail. Just kinda, I'm probably just gonna cut straight down. That way I can, uh, cause I have to angle the radiator a little bit forward like that. So this will give me a little bit more room in the back. Uh, I'll probably trim out some of this a little more. This is gonna get plated. I do wanna run something across there to keep it strong. Uh, I might run across at the top too, but nothing's going to be welded um, because I want to be able to remove it to get the engine and trans out, of course. But that's what I'm going to do. Just cut that out. Probably trim. I need to trim a little more here and maybe I trim the fan shroud just a little bit on this side right down there. You can see I took a notch out of it just to fit the, to clear this steering box but really nothing probably trim more right here clean all this stuff up yep and then the uh, i'll make a core support so i will weld something probably from here to there to come up for the hood latch i do want to use the stock hood latch and all that stuff um so we'll adapt all that to to fit just for you guys to get a little better idea of what i'm doing so that's after um that's what it looked like before so i just yeah just chop that straight down pretty easy uh, some good old-fashioned measuring probably would help but I just do most of this by eye I had to cut off a nub here is about an inch and a half long and it was just kind of making it not sit flat uh, I'm not even gonna use this original mount I'm probably gonna just use this uh, there's like some C channel here on the bottom that I can drill into and, and uh, use screws with uh, rubber grommets or something like that but I got enough room here now this is about where the radiator is gonna sit it's not perfectly straight here. It's leaning in at the top just a little bit. It will clear the hood up here. Um, yeah, it sits a lot lower now that I cut that nub off. 
The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to weld some tubing down here all the way across and some tabs on it where it's um, that's, that are going to have some bolts that go through and these notches are just going to sit on top of the bolts. And then on the top I'll probably have another uh, removable piece up here and it's going to bolt in. So this is more going to hold it from moving around. Um, the bottom's just going to set in there. But it looks good. I think it's going to be plenty of cooling for it. It's got dual fans. They both work awesome. I just tacked this 1x2 in right here from uh, frame rail to frame rail. This is kind of going to be the base for of the uh, whole core support. So I'm going to stem off pieces that are going to hold the radiator on this. And then I'm going to see if I can stem pieces to hold the hood. And then another one is going to stem from the metal, middle probably out a little bit and up to connect the two body um, sides again and hold the top of the radiator. But this is just tacked in for now until I really set in stone what I want to do. I'm just going to tack everything in. I fabricated this core support, um, removable, just the support here. All it is is some one inch tube with some eighth inch uh, tabs welded to it and I bolted into this factory mounting spot. I'm not sure. I forgot what that was for, but it was I don't remember what it was for, but they're already there and I just bolted it in. It's I mean, it's definitely pretty strong once it's fully welded. Uh, I think I'm gonna kick out some t two more tubes here or something somewhere to uh, mount this hood latch because I don't want to I don't want to change it on the hood at all. So it's just gonna fall down into the same spot. Yeah, so I got that in there just to bring some rigidity back to the body. I might have a uh, other connection somewhere, but this should be pretty strong. Hey guys, so I've kind of had to take a a step back um, in terms of progression on this thing because I was I had it too far uh, to the right, like maybe a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch. Uh, to the driver's side, which was making it touch the header or the stock manifold touch the uh, steering shaft. So I had to cut the motor mounts off. You can see that one's not even on anymore. I just have it kind of lined up. This one's off. Uh, it's kind of a bummer, but you know, it happens. I've never done this before again, so it's all new to me. But might as well make it right. So nothing has to be. Um, so nothing has to be cobbled together. And um, I was thinking of just remaking this whole this whole tube here, but I have this piece of uh, one and three quarter, which, I mean, this sleeves right into, which would be perfect. Uh, it actually makes it a lot easier to line everything up, which is great. So I can just slide it up in here, tack it there, and tack it on the, on the motor mount plate in there, and it will be good to go. So that kind of took a day out. I had to move the trans cross. I, and while I was moving it over, I decided to move it back another inch. So you can see, I'll see if I can put some sort of, uh, I'll see if I can put some sort of comparison on the screen, but it's only about, it. I moved it probably an inch back. So now it's got a finger's length behind the head, which is pretty good. So as you, I mean, you guys could see earlier that I was having a pretty hard time actually fitting that whole radiator in here without, um, I mean, it was getting in the way of everything, so this was just a little too far forward, but now it's set back the perfect amount, and um, it clears everywhere good. So I'm going to get the sleeves welded on there, and it's going to be just as strong as it was before, which is great. Got the motor mounted again, just a couple hours worth of work. It actually almost looks like it's more centered than before, but it's actually... It's kicked out to the passenger side about a quarter inch, which actually gives me a ton of room over here for my power steering. Yeah, there's much more room there. It gives me enough room for my header or my manifold on that side. Manifold on this side is plenty of room. But yeah, I mean, it's it's very, very small amount I moved it, but it's gonna help me a ton. So of course, since I moved the engine back, I had to move the trans mountain back a little bit so I added a gusset in here um, yeah I just used the same plate on top cut the tacks or the welds on it and then moved it back a little bit finally got the radiator mounted after like five different setups 
I was gonna hard mount it, but then I decided not to. So the way this is, it just uh, the right size tube kind of smushed in there and then holes drilled through this. Cause this is really the only thing you you can mount it to, this rail and the rail on the bottom. So I have that, I just welded it. Just a little tab over here to my core support, my main core support uh, tube there. And there's a piece of hose, just a little piece of rubber thing down there. And then on these, it's pretty interesting. Uh, these are the hood stops on the Suburban that I put down here. They fit perfect in there. And I mean, it doesn't, it's not going anywhere. You can see it has some movement, but I don't think that's gonna do anything, but radiators mounted in there looks good it's got a slight lean to it which is also good clearance up here I have clearance everywhere since I did move the motor back another inch uh, helped out a lot so it's looking good it took all day if not the past like three days I know this doesn't look super good so I think I have some uh, aluminum plate I think I might wrap around this maybe an entire thing of it it would look pretty cool I think just all aluminum plate on here it wouldn't match very much but uh, I think it would look cool I'm still waiting on the transmission stuff to come in uh, it's been like a week since I ordered it I think just because of this whole virus thing um, you know shipping everything's taking longer so bear with me on that should be here tomorrow or the next day I'm not sure but in the meantime, I also ordered some manual lock hubs. These these are just some cheap ones I got because I wanted to... I'll probably use them as spares. I'll buy some nicer ones uh, later on. But I just want to make sure everything works for one. I mean, they're, it's all metal. This is all metal, so it's not like cheap. It's super cheap. But they work fine. Uh, like I said, I'll probably use these as spares once I buy nicer ones. Because I have a feeling that these are either going to break or just kind of gum up. But they'll probably be good as spares. I'll let you guys know on that one. But they look pretty good on there. Just simplifies everything. I probably could have got the front axle to actuate from the transfer case. But it's just a lot more work. Since the front axle on this is vacuum operated and not electronic like the one on the Suburban. It would just be kind of weird setup I'd have to do. But this works pretty good. It's a lot more reliable and it's a lot just a lot more simple i think i'm going to pull this thing out tomorrow or the next day and we're going to get them get it all nice and nice and washed since it's been months and looking at this thing from the outside you couldn't even tell that there's anything special going on in there just looks like it did before i did the engine swap uh or before i got the engine mounted in we're not done yet it's not fully swapped of course so yeah, it looks completely stock until you open the hood. And then you got big old engine in here, the big old radiator. Next, I'm going to need to, of course, fix the transmission, put all those parts in. Should take about an hour, really. And then uh, get all this, this radiator plumbed in, uh, get the power steering pulley in. Uh, the next time I take it out, I'll fix the trans, and then once it goes back in, it's not coming out for a while. And then that's when I can really start uh, doing the, the fine tuning on it. So heater core stuff, um, the PCV stuff, fuel, everything. All the, the power steering lines, the trans cooler lines. I got still got a mount of trans cooler in here. One thing that's going to be really hard is going to be the hood latch. haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that yet. But, but we'll find a way to do it. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Just a quick one, me getting the radiator mounted. A uh, little bit harder than I, than I thought it would be. If I had to do it again, I would definitely get an aluminum radiator for it. Just because it already has mounting brackets and stuff. Um, and this was a pretty tight fit with the fans and everything. But you guys saw me move the motor mounts back. Um, just just kind of a bunch of, bunch of little things. Next time, you're going to see me start tidying everything up. And uh, just kind of putting the, the finishing stuff on it, wiring, uh, just running lines and all that stuff. So that's going to be it for today, and I'll see you guys in the next one.